Hey everyone. So in earlier lecture, we have seen that when does a Laplace transform of a function exist? Okay, that's what we call the existence theorem. We have seen that if the function is piecewise continuous and it's of exponential growth, then the Laplace definitely exists. So today we are just going to just recall that theorem and we are only going to briefly recall the counter examples as well. Okay, so that's the first thing we are going to do. Then second thing about the uniqueness. So we are going to see that if you have a function whose Laplace exists, then it has to be unique. Conversely, if you have f of s, then can you have two different functions with the same Laplace? Answer is yes. But then those two functions are not totally different. Okay, they are different only at countably many points. That's what we are going to see. So ultimately, you can say they are un unique, but in general, they are not. And therefore, talking about Laplace inverse makes sense. Okay, so these are few things that one should have an idea about the uniqueness of Laplace. So that's what the agenda is. So now let's recall first the existence theorem and the counter examples. So this was the statement, right? If you have a function that satisfies two nice conditions, what are those two nice condition? It has to be piecewise continuous. Okay, so it should be, if it is continuous, well and good. If it is not continuous, it should be at least continuous in the pieces. And wherever it is discontinuous, for those points, its left hand limit and the right hand limit should exist. Then such functions are called as piecewise continuous functions. And function is of exponential growth means what? After some stage, your function is bounded by an exponential function for after some stage t greater equal t. So after this t stage, value of the function is less equal a number times the exponential function. Then we call this to be an function of exponential growth and this least alpha is called as the order of this function. So if you have a function that satisfies these two conditions, then definitely the Laplace exists. Okay. So this is the sufficient condition for a Laplace transform of a function to exist. Okay. Sufficient condition means if these two functions satisfy these two conditions, then definitely the Laplace exists. But this is not the necessary condition. That means if the Laplace transform of a function exists, that does not guarantee that function will satisfy both the condition. Okay. And then we have seen the example, like if you take one upon root t, we have seen that this is a piecewise, this is not a piecewise continuous function because as you approach towards zero, zero is the point of discontinuity and you approach towards zero, still the limit does not exist. So this is not a piecewise continuous function. And if it, moreover, this is a function of exponential growth and its Laplace is I think root of pi by two times s. Okay, so we have seen all this before. So this is a function which is of ex exponential growth, but not a piecewise continuous, but still the Laplace exists. Okay, so this was one example. So that this is not the necessary condition. Another example. So one upon root t is a function of exponential growth. So if you take f of t as 2t e raised to t square cos of e raised to t square. Now, as you can see, all of them are continuous. So this is a continuous function. Hence, it is piecewise continuous. This is not a function of exponential growth because t and cos, they are the functions of exponential growth, but e raised to t square grows very rapidly. So this is not a function of exponential growth. So for one upon root t, it was other way, not piecewise, but exponential growth. This is an example, which is of not of exponential growth, but piecewise continuous. Whereas the Laplace of this also exists. Now how to prove? Well, if you observe this smartly, this is nothing but derivative of a nice function. This is nothing but the derivative of sine of e raised to t square. Okay. So Laplace of f of t is nothing but if I call this as g of t. So your f is nothing but derivative of g. So your f is nothing but derivative of g. But what is Laplace of derivative? It is S into Laplace of G minus G of zero. What is G of zero? It is S into Laplace of S. What is G of zero? E raised to zero is one. It is sine one. So this is sine one. 
सो टू शो दैट लैपलॉस ऑफ दिस एग्जिस्ट इज इनफ टू शो दैट लैपलॉस ऑफ जी एग्जिस्ट दैट मीन्स आई नीड टू शो लैपलॉस ऑफ दिस एग्जिस्ट वंस लैपलॉस ऑफ जी एग्जिस्ट वॉर इज लैपलॉस ऑफ एफ इट इज एस इन टू लैपलॉस ऑफ जी माइनस साइन वन सो इट इज इनफ टू शो दैट लैपलॉस ऑफ जी एग्जिस्ट हाउ डू यू शो दैट दिस एग्जिस्ट सो लेट्स ट्राई टू सी दैट so you have to simply show the existence even if you can't find the value that is okay you should at least try to say that this exist okay so what is laplace of g of t by definition it is integration 0 to infinity it is sin of e raised to t square into what is the definition e raised to minus st dt now how will you solve this well actually i don't need to solve this what i want to show that the laplace should exist once this is exist then this everything exists right so i just need to show this exist if you can find well and good i'm not going to find it so, so how will i do is i just take the mod on both side but what is mod of integration it is less equal integration of mod exponential is always positive so i'm not giving modulus to exponential but what is sign it is always bounded by 1 so this is less equal 0 to infinity e raised to minus st dt does this integral exist answer is yes what is this this is nothing but 1 into e raised to minus st and what is laplace of 1 1 by s so we know that this is always bounded by this and this is nothing but laplace of 1 which exist my s is greater than 0 so therefore laplace of g exist and since g this is nothing but my g of s so since it is bounded by this integral and this integral is convergent right so by if you remember in improper integrals you might have studied uh, comparison tests so by direct comparison test if this integral is converging then this integral also converges okay so I don't know what is the answer, but definitely I know that it converges. That means the Laplace exists. So this g of s is existing. Therefore, this exists. So this is the counter example, not counter example. So this is an example of a function which is not of exponential growth but piecewise continuous, and its Laplace exists. Okay. So existence theorems they give the sufficient condition on f for a Laplace to exist. if the laplace exist that does not necessarily imply that function will satisfy both the condition and for them these are the two counter examples one upon root t and this one okay now come back to uniqueness so if you have a function whose laplace exist so if you have a function whose laplace exist then obviously it has to be unique right why because what is laplace of a function it is integral 0 to infinity f of t into e raised to minus st dt so you are integrating a function and obviously when you integrate a definite integral you always get some answer you only get one answer right you can't get two different answer integration never gives you two different answer so since integration of a function is unique therefore laplace of a function is always unique okay so if you have two functions say f1 and f2 which are equal then their laplace is laplace of f1 is also equal to laplace of f2 okay so laplace of a function if exist is uniquely determined but what about the converse if i have can you have two different functions can you have two different functions with same laplace that's what the question is here it was if you have a function if you take its laplace is it unique yes because you will never have two different laplaces okay so it's unique if exist now i'm asking conversely if i take can you have two different functions with the same laplace or if you have some say f of s if i take its inverse can i get two different functions well the answer is yes so let me give an example so before giving you the example i need to tell you a theorem that involves integration okay so what riemann proved that if you have two functions say defined over an interval ab say f is a function say white chalk is f of x and g is a function 
विच इज सेम एवरीवेयर एक्सेप्ट से एट काउंटेबली मेनी पॉइंट ओके सो हियर देर इज अ सर्कल सो माय एफ इज इक्वल टू जी ओके सो ब्लू कलर चौक इज जी फंक्शन व्हाइट कलर वाज अर्लियर वन सो यू कैन सी माय एफ एंड जी आर ऑलमोस्ट सेम दे आर डिफरिंग एट वन टू एंड थ्री पॉइंट सो जी इज सेम एज एफ टिल हियर देन देर इज अ जम्प एट जी G is same till here. There is a jump at G. G is same till here. There is a jump over here, and then again G. So if you have two functions defined over a common interval, and if they are differing at countably many points, here I am taking three points, but one can generalize. So if you have two functions f and g which are differing at countably many points, then integration of a function f of x dx. and integration of a function g of x dx are always equal so integral does not get affected if the functions are differing at countably many points actually if you know major theory there's a subject in mathematics this can generalize this this can be generalized further but okay for at this moment i just want to say that if you have two functions which are differing at countably many points then integration does not get affected and because of this nice theorem now one now one can construct plenty of examples so if i take say f of t s t what is laplace of f of t that means what is laplace of t it is 1 upon s square you construct another function g of t which is t which is suppose say 10 when t is not equal to 4 and it is t only otherwise okay so on 0 to infinity i am only concentrating on 0 to infinity we are in laplace transforms so over this interval my f is the constant uh, the linear function t okay so my f is a linear function t y equal to x is laplace is 1 upon s square now what is g function g is same as f everywhere except at 4 at 4 it is taking the value 10 okay it's not taking the value 4 so here there is a jump and this is the g function so f and g are same everywhere except at one point which is countable therefore when i take the integral of f and g so therefore since f and g are differing only at one point f of t into e raised to minus st and g of t into e raised to minus st will also differ only at one point so when i take their integral by riemann theorem their integrals are same therefore what is the integral of this f of s which is 1 upon s square this is g of s therefore these two functions are different and they are having the same laplace transform okay so if i take laplace inverse of 1 upon s square it need not be unique because laplace inverse of 1 upon s square you can write this i can write this answer is same okay but but are these two functions that much different no they are same only almost same i would say because they are differing only at one point okay so one can prove that if you take laplace inverse of a function then as you can see you get more than one functions but then this functions like some other person he might define h of t as 10 if t is not equal to 4 uh, 13 if t is not equal to 7 and t otherwise so my function and your function is differing only at one point which is at 4 some other person is defining like this but then in that case it is differing only at two points which is countably many points so integration of all the three functions like laplace of all the three functions is 1 upon s square but the good thing is one can prove that all these functions which are giving you the same laplace transform they can differ only at this countably many points or as i said in major theory there is something called as major zero set but i won't go into that so here if you have more than one functions which are having the same laplace transforms then those functions are not that much different they will differ only at countably many points okay 
it's not like they will differ over the interval it won't even differ over interval it will only differ at countably many points so that's why i can say that if i take laplace inverse of a function suppose if i'm getting two functions f of t and g of t then they are equal almost everywhere they are equal almost everywhere that means they are differing at countably many points okay so one can say that laplace inverse of f of s if i take the laplace inverse it is you can say unique up to countably many points okay it's unique up to countably many points so that's one thing one should understand and therefore one can it makes sense to talk about laplace inverse because since i'm using the phrase almost everywhere otherwise it doesn't make sense because if i take laplace inverse of this and if i'm getting drastically different 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 functions then talking about laplace inverse doesn't make sense i will get something different laplace inverse you will get something different someone will get totally different okay but we are not getting that much different functions we are getting different functions but they are different only at countably many points so therefore concept of laplace inverse makes sense so if someone ask you is laplace inverse of a function unique in general in general answer is no but yeah overall they are unique up to countably many points unique up to countably many points means they might differ but wherever they are differing those are countable in number and if you have two continuous functions f and g which are continuous so continuous is much more stronger than piecewise continuous so if you have a continuous functions having the same laplace then those two functions has to be same okay so these are some points that one has to keep in mind regarding uniqueness okay so if you have a function if its laplace exist then it is unique conversely if i have f of s and if i take the laplace inverse is it unique in general answer is no you can have two different functions having the same laplace okay because integration does not affect at countably many points okay so but if i i can if i still want to stress on uniqueness i can say that laplace inverse of f of s is unique up to countably many points that means wherever these two functions are differing those are countable in number in particular if you have two functions which are continuous having the same laplace then those two functions has to be same okay for continuity or for piece wise it's unique up to countably many points yeah so that's all about uniqueness so i hope you understood if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section i will be more than happy to answer thank you